Hey everyone. I hope everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving that celebrates it. And I hope everybody is doing well this weekend. Um, we're gonna talk today about diamond painting accessories. So if you're a newbie, this is a good one for you to watch. So uh, we're gonna start, this is my uh, current whip. Um, as you can see, I've done the bottom two rows. Um, this is the uh, done decorating canvas that came in the advent calendar with Darnman Art Club. Um, it's working out fairly quickly. There's just there's just enough um, confetti and a bunch of color blocking, and it's working out beautifully. Okay, so what do we need to talk about? Well, first thing we're going to discuss is what kind of wax do you use in your diamond painting pen? Okay, you'll probably get one with every kit you get. Sometimes it will look like this. Sometimes it will look like this. Okay, depending on where you get the kit from. Sometimes it might even look like this. Okay, this is all wax to put in your drill pin. Um, Largely, I like to use waxes in my single placer. Um, I like the blue wax myself, and I know there shouldn't be a difference, but there actually is. It's quite, it's quite interesting. I'm not even sure of the reason. It's probably some, I don't know, chemistry solution issue. But I will say that I find the blue wax is a little bit harder. It's not quite as pliable. It tends to last longer than the red or the yellow or the purple. So I appreciate the blue wax. I like that the best. Also, there are putties. I like to use putty in my multi-placers. These happen to be from Randa's Crafty Corner. This is coffee cake scented putty and cotton candy scented putty. Um, I particularly like Randa. She has an Etsy shop, excellent customer service. You always send some little cute freebie thing with, with her orders. Um, these are really nice putty. Not only do they smell wonderful and they're not overly strong, but they last and last and last. They don't have, you don't get strings on your drills or lots of residue or any of that. They're really, really pleasant. So if you get a chance and you're looking to try some putty, Randa's, R-A-N-D-A apostrophe S, Crafty Corner. Highly recommend you check out some of her putty. Alternatively, if you're just not sure you're going to like it, but you'd still like to give it a try, I recommend Quake Hold. This is a museum putty that's used to keep artifacts from falling off shelves. This is important because like I said, I live in Southern California and we <laughs> have earthquakes here. So that's what it's designed for. But if you put this in your multi-placers or even your single placer, it will last, oh gosh, such a long time. Doesn't leave any residue. It's great if you're using ABs. It's great if you're using crystal drills. It's just all around good stuff. And this is probably the least expensive investment ever. I think I paid $3.45 for this on Amazon. Yeah, can't get much cheaper. And it lasts forever. I mean, this little package happens to be 2.64 ounces. Um, I've had this for months and I barely scratched the surface because, again, it just lasts forever and ever and ever. Um, another option you could try, I'm just now trying out, is Blue Tack. Uh, which is also a putty, um, it's, it uh, is blue. Um, I'm enjoying using it, it works well, but I am finding some stringiness with it. So I'm giving it a fair shake. I'm gonna work with it a little longer just to see, you know, <laughs> where are we with that? But excellent source of putty to try and really economical. So that's your waxes and your putties. Um, if you go to the Etsy store, there's a plethora of putty to choose from. There's lots and lots of them. There's, you know, Wee Wax and Dot Dot Putty and so many others. Um, um, Enablers Outpost has Chit, um, which is their brand of putty. So I think you ought to try whichever ones um, seem like a great idea to you. 
okay? Um, there are people that like to use glue dots. Uh, you might want to catch a video from one of them because I, I find it fascinating. I don't like glue dots. I did try them, but they were just not my thing. So that wasn't for me, but it's worth viewing some of the videos to see if maybe it might be for you. Okay. Next we have washi tape. Um, comes in different widths. It comes in different patterns, colors. I mean, just... <laughs> This is the most diverse supply <laughs> you will use because it really literally comes in every color, size, shape, everything you can think of. Um, now, what do you do with washi tape? Well, you'll notice here in my current whip, which is work in progress again, um, I do two different things. I put a wider washi tape around the border outside so that the areas that have a little extra glue that has come off of the drill field, and they all do. It's not a manufacturing defect. It's just the nature of the beast, okay? But because it's got a little extra sticky down just where the canvas is, where there's no drill field, um, dust, dirt, lint, pet hair, uh, any kind of grime that floats by is likely unable to stick on those little areas. So if you put washi tape on it, you protect that so that surface. You don't get any of those little things you have to pick off. And the washi tape will peel right off when you're finished. So you can take it off before you seal it. Remove the washi tape. Um, if, you, if you seal over it, sometimes getting it off is a lot trickier and really a pain and it, you just need to take it off before you seal it. So, and I will talk more about that when I talk to you in the video where I am gonna be sealing some diamond paintings. Okay, so I use a wider for the border, okay? Then when I section off the canvas to work on it. Now, I leave my clear plastic covering on here. It's a personal preference. A lot of people use release papers. I don't like release papers because I like to be able to see the canvas that I'm working on. <laughs> I like to see the picture. I like to watch it come to life. I don't wanna cover it up for the purpose of having a release paper and then peel it off and see one section. Okay, I want to see the whole thing. Plus, that comes with it. Like, you don't, you don't have to purchase anything. The plastic cover is already there. So, what I do is I section it off. I, I don't measure, I'm not that worried about if they're exactly even sections. If you are, take a measuring tape, take a ruler, whatever your measuring tool of choice is, go ahead and Measure it out, divide by however many rows you think or columns you think you should have, and section it off that way. Um, Katie over at Diamonds and Wash, she has a whole video on how she uses washi tape. Um, so I section it off. Why do I do that? Well, because it's very easy then, when I want to do one section, to peel it off, put my cover minder down, and then I have this section to work on. Okay? So... That's the reason that I I do it. Um, again, personal preference. If you want to be a release paper person, God love you. Go ahead and do that. Um, so that's the purpose of washi tape. Now, since we talked about the cover minder, let's talk about the cover minders. Okay, so on this one, you can see that I'm using this little reindeer. This was one of the set of four cover minders Again, that was in the advent calendar with Diamond Art Club. Now, how do we use them? Well, again, when you peel off or when you peel up your section of plastic, okay, I would go ahead and crease it just on principle. Okay, cover minders have magnets. Let me get a, a bigger one that's easier to see. Um, I'm going to use her. Okay. Isn't she cute? This is made by Anna over at Fairy Dust Clay. She has some of the most adorable pieces of work I have ever seen. And all you have to do, I buy the magnets separately. So you notice I have a few different sizes in here depending on the size of the object that I'm going to create a cover minder out of. 
this one because she's large, so I use the larger one, okay? And really all you need to do is you take out two magnets, use E6000 glue or Loctite or some type of, you know, very serious cementing town type of, of adhesive of your choice, okay? Put them on there and then overnight, and then it will be a cover minder. So you take off one magnet underneath your canvas, okay? In fact, I think I can show you here, okay? So you see, here it is. Okay, you take the other one, you put it on top. Now you're ready to work on your canvas. This will hold back your plastic, doesn't get in the way, you don't have to worry about it, and you have this cute little thing to look at while you're working. Okay, so that's what how you use a cover minder and what it's for, okay? So, now, again, you can literally make a cover minder out of almost anything. So, I'm gonna show you some of the ones that I have made out of things that work for me, okay? Um, this one I happen to have gotten from Diamond Art Club in one of my kits, this little blue shell, which I think is completely adorable. So whenever I do any of my underwater ones or mermaids or anything like that, this shell will be perfect. Okay. I bought at, I think this was Timu, pretty sure, a set of 12 of these adorable little, has a little face on it, sea creatures. And um, there were there were 12 all together. I think there were six different ones and there were two of each one. Hang on, they all wanna talk at the same time. Let me see about moving that, hold on. So there's a little whale. There's a little crab, there's a little seahorse, there's a little jellyfish, and there's a little clam with a pearl in it. Bring it a little closer so that you can see a little bit better. Okay, so there were two of each of these for $1.69, I got 12 of them. So all I did was I ordered the magnets separately. When they arrived, I just went ahead and put the magnets on all of them. And so, um, let them sit overnight. And in the morning, voila, cover minders. 12 new cover minders for, you know, a fraction of what it would cost if you actually ordered them. There's nothing wrong with ordering them and I recommend that you do that if you find some that you really like that one of the Etsy creators has or you know any of the standard people okay i also have made some out of enamel pins and again you can use whatever source you want whatever your favorite you know store in the mall has or whatever you want to use um, to make your cover minders you can Again, uh, Diamonds and Washi, our friend Katie over there, has a whole video dedicated to how to um, take the backs off of enamel pins so that you can create cover minders. Um, this one, um, not only was this an enamel pin, this actually had a pin that was vertical instead of, of horizontal. But it was easy, it came off fairly quickly. I put the magnets on. So now I have this beautiful decorative wolf cover minder. I do a lot of wolf themed diamond paintings because I really like wolves and dragons very much. And so it's fun to have him out holding back the plastic while I'm working on it. So that's one. Then another one. I have, um, if I can get it out. I keep them <laughs> in a metal tin uh, because I know they won't fall out because they're magnetic, right? But sometimes it makes it hard to get out. Okay, this was also a pin. It says, I speak fluent sarcasm. 
And again, I just took off the back, put on the magnets, ready to go. And this is also why it's a good idea to have multiple sizes because you never know for sure um, exactly what, um, you know, size it's going to be that you're going to need when you take off the pins. Sometimes you have a limited space and sometimes you have a large space. So it's nice to have multiple size magnets. Here's another one. It says it's weird being the same age as old people. Some of you out there will know what I mean. Okay. Also, some of you might recognize Droopy from the cartoons back a while ago, our friend Droopy. Also, Rocky and Bullwinkle. So you can just really go to town. All of these pins you can create adorable cover minders to work with when you're diamond painting. So I highly recommend making some of those. Um, if you have any problems, I mean, you're welcome to, um, to contact me at the link or at my email address, which is wendywritings at gmail.com or one, the number one morning rain at gmail.com. Okay. Now, what else can you use? Well, sometimes... I find myself in need of a cover minder that allows me to put trash drills away while I'm working. Um, you know fairly quickly when you get into a diamond painting, if it's gonna be one of those where you have some misshapen drills and for whatever reason, there seems to be a lot of trash. Um, and when, especially if you're working on a really big canvas, it's, you want to be continuing to work. You don't want to have to, you know, move and, and get up and do whatever you need to do every time you need to throw away a drill. So the solution, these are three different containers that I got at Timu. Put magnets on the bottom. And now as I'm working, I have three separate cover minders that I get to use as trash receptacles. Okay, I love it. It's wonderful. And it's just, you can leave the lid off or you can put, take it off as needed. But it's nice to be able to have somewhere to put trash drills. So, and these, you know, were pennies to make, like very inexpensive. So when you see a little container or if you're at the thrift store or Goodwill or Dollar Tree or wherever you are and you happen to see a cute little container, think about that might make a cute cover minder. Okay. So those are just some possibilities, some options you might want to think about. Now, again, um, Anna over at Fairy Dust Clay does some of the most just amazing work. I just love her work. Here's her card, Fairy Dust Clay website, fairydustclay.com. And, um, Email is fairydustclay at gmail.com. Okay, and there's all of her information. Uh, she does send a card and a discount code with each order. Now, I was looking for, when I first looked, I was looking for a cute Halloween one. So I found this little shaker Halloween um, clay uh, object, and I put on the magnets so I could use it. This year I participated in drills and chills, um, which I had not done before. So I wanted just, you know, a cute little minder to be seasonal. So I found this little shaker and I really enjoyed using it. It was a lot of fun. So that's one of hers. This is the one I believe I already showed you. I liked this one because I needed one that was Christmassy and this one reminded me of my little chihuahua and me. So that's why I had that one. And then this one, cause I, you know, I love purple and I had to have a dragon when I do all my dragon type um, diamond paintings because ugh, how cute, right? I mean, look at the face on him. He's a, so adorable. She does just amazing work, you guys. Then I had a mermaid with her pet seahorse. 
and this one, which is called Beach Vibes, because again, I live in Southern California, so there she is, driving to the beach, got her little sunglasses and her surfboard, and her little shell on her car. I love this one, it's so cute. <laughs> okay, so, and again, they already come with one side flat, so it's very simple to put those on. And then, you know, you just take them off when you're ready, slide one underneath, and you're all set to go. Perfect cover minders. She included this one as a freebie, which I thought was incredibly cute because, you know, it's got a little bunny hat. It'd be cute to do all the Easter ones and whatnot. So that was very sweet of her to include this free one. So those are all the types of cover minders. Again, fairydustclay.com. Highly recommend that you go look at her site because so cute. Oh, so cute, you guys. Fantastic little clay pieces, very easy, and takes the, the glue well when you want to turn them into cover minders. You can also put a magnet on the back, or you can put a pin back on it and wear it. I mean, it's up to you. So, definitely worth checking out. Now, last thing I want to talk to you about is pens. Pens, pens, pens. Okay. There are so many different types of pens you guys there are so many and it is again personal preference there are a lot of companies especially on etsy that put out their own blanks they do their own turnings they do their own um single placers usually when you order it so you know they're all all it's only your imagination that holds you back because there are so many now these are my pens. I I like a mid-sized pen. Okay, this is my favorite width for a pen. Smaller than this, and I get a lot of cramping and hand fatigue because I had carpal tunnel surgery in 2016 on both my hands. So I, I can't be gripping, you know, for a long stretch because it does hurt. If I go bigger than this, then the next problem I face is I get arthritis really bad right in my pincher finger here. So I don't, I can't have something that extends my thumb for a long period of time because it causes me pain. So this is the perfect shape. I believe this is around the three quarter inch um, width. And I do have one custom made pen that I'm expecting supposed to be here this week, which I will do an unboxing when it gets here. Um, but I don't just use one pen. I use all of these pens with every diamond painting. And I'll explain. All of these pens have a single placer on the end, okay? On this end down here, everybody has a single placer. Some of them are, you know, standard brass tips. Some of them are diamond art club, stainless steel tips. Uh, you name it, it's in here. Okay. The other end, however, is where the fun begins. So on this other end, I have multi-placing multi tips ranging from 2 to 10 and 12. Yes. I also have one that I keep my, my roller on for pressing drills at the, after I'm finished. I also have a straightener that I keep on a small pen that I use when I straighten my rows and straighten the columns and everything just before sealing a diamond painting. So I always have one of those. Okay, now. Some of you will recognize this one because this is the one that was in the Diamond Art Club Advent Calendar. So this is the newbie, okay? So here we go. This is my two-placer, which, you know, I hesitated in buying for a long time because I didn't think I would use a two-placer and oh my God, I use it constantly, constantly, okay. So there's the two, here's the three, here's the four, 
Here's the five. Here's the six. Here's the seven. This pen is fun, it glows in the dark, it cracks me up, it's a hoot. Um, here's the eight. Here's the nine. Here's the 10. This is another Diamond Art Club pen. I think it was called Life in the Clouds. And here's the 12. Okay. Now, what is the benefit to this? Okay, well, let me tell you. So, before I start a diamond painting, I fill all of the single placers with the wax of my choice, usually blue. All of them full. I load all of the multi placers with putty, whichever type I'm planning to use that particular time. Load them all up with putty. Okay. And then I pick a spot where I'm going to start working. And however many drill spots happen to be there, that's what I pick up. So if it's a if it's a small spot and it's got four, I pick up the four. Take up my drills, do my multi-placing with the fours. When I'm finished with fours, perfect. Go on to the next one. If I go to the next one and there's nine places, pick up my nine placer. Go pick up my drills, start placing my nines, okay? If I have to scoot anything or move anything, I do that with the other end, go back to placing my nines, okay? When there are no more nines left, if I need sixes, get my six placer. Now remember, these are all puttied and ready to go, all waxed, ready to go. Pick up my drills, put them in here. If I have a wide spread, here's my 12 placer, I'm ready to go. Now, what is the benefit? Well, let me tell you what I have discovered. So to start with, the benefit is I almost never have to reload any of these pens during the entire diamond painting that I'm working on. Sometimes well into halfway through a second one before I have to change out any putty or add a lot of wax to anything. Um, when I run across ABs, I usually use my two placer because it's got putty in this end instead of the wax in this end and it doesn't pull the putty out like it does with wax. So I use this one to place all my ABs. Um, or if there's three ABs in a row or five, you get the picture. So I do all of that and I never have to stop because I hate to stop and reload a pen when I'm in the zone. When I'm really making progress and I'm having a good time and I'm really working on my diamond painting, I do not want to stop and have to play with wax or putty again. I just don't want to. Well, because I use all of them throughout the painting, depending on how many drill spots are coming up, none of them get overused. None of them start to leak or have residue. Um, it's just a, it's such an easy just to grab the next one, put it back, grab the next one, put it back, grab the next one, put it back. So I am faster, neater, and have less having to stop and reload by doing it this way than if I was only using one or two pens for the entire thing. Now, God love you for you people that like to only single place or you only want to use a couple of pens. Wonderful. You do you. I want to be able to keep it moving. So that's what I do. It also gives me a chance to use all of my pens every time, which I love because I like all of them and I don't want to have to pick which one I'm going to use because I literally enjoy them all. So that is how I do it. Now you can do whatever you'd like with your pens. So um, again, and I do have, um, you know, both, like I said, some Diamond Art Club multi-placers and then I have some stainless steel and I have a couple that are an alloy. Um, I just happen to like the way these particular ones work. I don't know if it's the way they were manufactured because they're not all created equal. Uh, if you've spent some time diamond painting and multi-placing, you know that. 
Even the skinny plastic multi-placers are not all the same. I don't know if it's how they're cut. I don't know if it's, you know, with the material, but they're not all the same. So this works for me. You do whatever works for you. Now, Mrs. Coffee, she likes the chunky pens that are the large diameter ones, um, which is great. And I love to watch her work because she's, she, well, she could flip that pen around like it didn't weigh anything. So if that's your jam, perfect. Um, Teresa over at Diamonds by Tita, she likes a thinner pen. To her, that's more comfortable. So, okay, that's great. Whatever you want to do, whatever you want to use to do your best work, I encourage you to do. You do need to be comfortable. If you're uncomfortable when you diamond paint, you're not going to want to diamond paint. Or if you do, it's not going to be a good experience while you're doing it because you aren't comfortable. You need a, a good, comfortable chair. You need a good, comfortable pen. You need a halfway decent tray. You need to make sure that you have space to work and that you have as few distractions as possible. Just, you know, it's supposed to be a relaxing, fun, entertaining hobby to do. If it's anything else, change your setup because that's more than likely what the problem is going to be. Okay, so that's pens. Now, last but not least, we're going to talk about some trays. Now, <clears throat> we all know what the trays from Diamond Art Club look like. They come in every little kit. They've got the stopper on the end. Keep your girls from coming out. Okay. So I think these are a nice little tray. Um, you can do some pretty good work with this. Um, I usually overfill a little bit, then shake them down in there, let them fill up. Then if I'm multi-placing, I do it till I'm out of rows and then I take all the drills that have settled in the bottom, turn it back this way, shake it down again till I get more rows of drills to place. Okay. I think they're good little trays. Um, we've all seen these little trays that also come in some of the other types of kits. Um, and I, in my first video, I showed you about putting the stopper from the, from the squishy so that you have a stopper that you can just take in and out easily and doesn't allow your drills to spill. And then you can get larger trays in a variety of places. Um, this one, I believe I got in my art dot storage case. It came with it. This is a large tray. <laughs> so this is nice. If I'm doing a lot, a huge area of color blocking that has, you know, where I know I'm going to be using my 9, 10, or 12 placer most of the time, this is a great tray because the lines are so much longer. You know, they'll be here a while. So I think you should always have at least one large tray because I think that's really the way to go. Um, there are a multitude of other types of trays that you can get. Um, this came with a set from a storage system that I got through Amazon. Um, now, pros and cons. What I... I liked these, except again, these trays, you have to sort of hold this opening because there's no way to keep your drills from falling out. Okay, so you have to kind of, you know, when you do it I mean they're they're nice they're long they're they're not too very wide you know but they're it's you know pretty good if you're going to use a, your five six seven placer these are perfectly adequate trays you do get three of them and you can get them all in one color or three different colors entirely up to you they're all made the same way but what I liked was that they came in this which is also a tray this is the biggest tray I have seen um, I'm not really sure why they decided to put the grooves widthwise. <laughs> I'd like to have seen them make it lengthwise, but it's okay. There are plenty of them, so you can do a lot of multi-placing with this tray. And when, you know, this is again a huge tray, and when you're finished and you can put everything back together, you know, ever so nicely, and, um, you know, you can't really go wrong with it. So, now, 
again, there are a multitude of different types of trays. Um, there are people that sell um, 3D printed trays that come with all kinds of fancy gadgets. Some of them have a trash drill tray actually placed inside the tray. They have levers that open and close the end to keep your drills in or to pour them out. Um, they have magnetic tops. Some of them are stackable. Everything you could possibly want in a tray, you can find on Etsy. Um, so, you know, you can check at Bijou Bliss. You can check Nix's Notions. You can check Firefly. There's so many to choose from. So really, um, just working, doing diamond paintings, you'll start to realize what's comfortable for you. If you're comfortable with small trays, you know what? Use the small trays. If you find you like the big trays better, go for it. You do whatever works for you. I find that the Diamond Art Club trays and this large tray are my go-tos. I also have a set that's got a tray like this big purple one, but it's got six tiny trays, which I do use occasionally when I have a canvas that has a ton of confetti and I know I'm only gonna need a few drills of multiple colors. I just fill them up and then pour them back in when I'm finished. So again, whatever works for you, you should definitely use. So whether it's cover minders or trays or drill pens or washi tape, you find the, or wax or putty, you find the accessories that work best for you and make your diamond painting experience just that much better. All right. Hope everyone has a wonderful evening. Um, questions, comments, concerns, let me know down in the comments. And um, I appreciate all of you coming by and taking a look at the video. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks, everybody. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.